All right, everybody, on today's video, we're going to be covering all the objections that atheists are giving against the existence of God, and I'm going to be debunking them one at a time like a gnat that hits my, you know, visor on my helmet and is instantly killed. That's how we're going to be killing these arguments, just like getting a gnat and squeezing it. So join us right now as we go to beautiful wine country on this motorcycle that just popped into existence after a massive explosion. All right, everybody. I have something that I'm going to tell you that's going to shock the hell out of you. Do you know that there was an explosion and out of that explosion all these pieces of metal and plastic and rubber were put together and this motorcycle formed itself. I know you're shocked to hear that but you know it it took a long time over you know millions and millions of years to do it. It happened so long ago I don't have any evidence to show you that that's how the motorcycle was put together but that is what I would say if I was an atheist. But I'm a Christian motorcycle rider and you and I know folks that this motorcycle is the product of intelligent design. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going to a beautiful uh, winery like a massive acres of wineries over here in California as we answer the atheist objections to the existence of God. And we're going to be taking this beautiful machine, the Kawasaki Z1000, uh, which as I mentioned is a product of intelligent design. Now, you may be saying, well that's stupid shock. Why would you say, start off the video by saying that it exploded and all this and, and then it it actually came together. Everyone knows that complex designs do not just come together. They are the product of intelligence, of a mind, and you would be right. Well, if everyone agrees with that, then how can atheists, and if you're an atheist watching this video, how can you say that something like your body, which is over a billion times more complex than this motorcycle, how can your body just come together by chance and you have absolutely the atheists have absolutely no evidence that our body came together by chance zero evidence it is a faith-based statement however the Christians do have evidence because everything we see that is created and complex everything that is created with the complexity has been created with design so that it requires intelligence. Now, as you guys know, we're going to get on the motorcycle right now and take you on a first-person ride. As you know, I have been challenging atheists all around the world to answer one simple question. You know the question. What proof and evidence can you provide that would finally at last prove that atheism is accurate and correct? And do you know no atheist has been able to answer that question? And... I have here in my formal Bible page turning hands every objection to the existence of God. So we're going to get on the motorcycle and I'm going to answer every single objection that the atheists are sending me that they believe are objections to the existence of God. Let's go. Okay, so we're on the motorcycle and before we get going, let me go through the list of all the things. These are all the objections that atheists have given. Uh, that they believe, incorrectly so, proves that atheism is accurate and correct. Let's go through them. They'll say Jesus is a zombie. Number two, life came from non-life. Number three, they'll say they lack a belief. Number four, they'll say atheism is the default position. Uh, number five, they'll say that uh, God lacks evidence. There's evidence of God existing. We'll talk about that. Number six, they are very angry that the Bible says, they always bring this up, well, I can't even believe in the Bible because it says, suffer not a witch to live. You know how they used to give witches the capital punishment of death 
in the uh, Bible. Ah, the good old days. And then number seven, they'll say we can't see God. We're going to talk to you about that. Uh, they say that we're number nine. Uh, that was seven. Number eight, uh, we believe in God and we believe in Christianity because we're born in America. This is what they'll say, like it's based on where we're born. They say morals are all subjective. They say that atheism is good and better than Christianity. We're going to debunk that. They're going to say uh, another reason why they don't like the Bible is because God doesn't like homosexuals. Uh, God loves everybody, but they are referring to when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Again, all the good old days. <laughs> um, and then they'll say, well, look, I'm telling God to smite me, and he's not smiting me, therefore God doesn't exist. And they'll say, that's number 12. Number 13, the universe ex looks exactly like what it would look like if God did not exist. And I'm going to debunk that, too. It's that, that's not true. And then they'll say, well, what about suffering in the world? Suffering disproves that God exists. We're going to talk about that, how it doesn't disprove God. And then they'll say, tell me one thing that I can't do as an atheist that you can do as a Christian. In other words, they'll say they don't need God. They can do everything as an atheist. Christopher Hitchens, before he went to hell, I'm not happy about that, guys. I'm really sad. But Christopher Hitchens most likely is in hell right now. Think about that. So shocking is that that his brother, Peter Hitchens, has renounced his atheism. Peter was an atheist also and is now a Christian. Peter Hitchens made the wise decision. We're going to show you, unfortunately, that Christopher Hitchens, according to Scripture, was a fool. Now, but Hitchens used to ask that question all the time. Tell me one thing that I can do now that I can't do now. I guarantee you Hitchens is not an atheist any longer. And number 16, they'll say creationists are dumb. I actually had some people say that, and they spelled dumb, D-U-M. <laughs> oh, you atheist. You give us so much opportunity for comedy. So let's get started, shall we? And we're good. this is a very strong magnetic tank bag, but that's good because I need it for this right here. So let's go, and we're going to take you to some high-speed roads, wine country here. We did one of these videos. Uh, you can look underneath this video for a couple of the videos that we did like this, debunking the atheist arguments. And the last one, we just got to see the tip of the wineries. So here we go. Let's see where this takes us. Let's start off with number one. They'll say, well, Jesus is a zombie. You believe in a zombie. There are no such things as zombies. Isn't it interesting that atheists say that Jesus is something that doesn't even exist? It's pretend. Zombies are pretend. And so they'll say Jesus, who is an actual historical person, you know, Bart Ehrman, uh, who's an atheist, he has walked away from God. Even he admits that Jesus Christ is a historical person, not a zombie. Richard Dawkins admits that Jesus Christ is a historical person, not a zombie. We're going to go through these real quick, and then I'll come back. So, when you really think about it, the closest thing to a zombie is an atheist. Jesus said that one time Jesus was walking along, and uh, he told one of the people that were following him, hey, look, follow me, you know. Come walk with me, follow me, follow my teachings. And the guy said, well, let me first go bury my dad. It doesn't mean that the dad just died, but the dad's getting up there in age, most likely. And he's like, oh, look, once my dad's dead, then I'll come follow you. And Jesus said these words, which at first seem kind of insensitive. He says, look, let the dead bury their own dead. It, so according to Jesus Christ, he looks at people that are unsaved as they're dead in their sins. They're, they're not living. They're literally like the, the walking dead. They're like zombies. If anyone's a zombie, if there was anything like that, like a walking dead person, it would be atheist. So, uh, let's go to the next one. This next one's very good. Um, there's a friend of mine on YouTube named Micah. 
Now Micah called into the Atheist Experience show and he gave them this argument and he totally destroyed atheism. And he basically called up the Atheist Experience show and he said, do you believe that life came from non-life? So atheists claim that life came from non-life. Something living came from something that's dead. That's what atheists believe. Now, we've never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, have we witnessed that. Okay? We've never seen life come from non-life. That's a faith-based statement. But, Matt Dillahunty said, well, yes, they believe that life came from non-life, and he admitted that we've never seen that happen. So then Micah said, on the call, it was absolutely brilliant, he said, if you believe that life can come from non-life, how can you deny the resurrection? I mean, think about it. Oh, it's telling us to go left here. If you are going so far as to saying that life can come from non-life, then the resurrection is totally real. After all, you're admitting that life can come from non-life. And if Jesus was not alive in the tomb after he was crucified, you yourself, atheist, you must admit that life can come from non-life. You cannot say, if you're an atheist, that the resurrection is impossible. After all, you believe that life came from non-life. Think about that. So, if you believe life came from non-life, then basically, let me downshift here, basically you cannot say that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is impossible. Alright, let's see what we have. Now, atheist number three here, they'll say they, they lack a belief. I keep getting atheists saying that. That does not mean that God doesn't exist. Your lack of belief is separate from reality. Do you know there's alcoholics that lack the belief that they have a drinking problem? So, the belief can be separate from reality. I'm going to give you an example. What is this? Pori, Poroi Road, right? I can say I lack a belief that I'm on Poroi Road. It doesn't mean it's true. Someone could have a problem with drugs. They're doing illegal drugs, and most of them are in denial that they have a problem. They don't want to admit it, and they lack a belief that they have a problem. The Muslim can say that Islam is right simply because they lack a belief in atheism. In fact, the I lack a belief argument is contradictory because the Muslim can say I lack a belief that atheism is true and therefore Islam would be true? This is weird. This is how atheists think. This is madness. This is your brain on atheism. So when an atheist says they lack belief, what it really means is they lack arguments for the existence of God. What we're saying is, imagine God's here on the right and you're on the left, my atheist friend. We don't want to hear about you. We want to hear arguments about God. But what you're doing, my sweet, cuddly, huggable, lovable atheist friends, you're moving it away from the topic of God and you're putting it on yourself. And that's not the question. We're not asking you what you think about yourself and you. <laughs> and your belief that we're not asking that we're saying what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is accurate or correct do you know the godless engineer on youtube you guys should contact him he's terrified to successfully provide proof and evidence that would finally at last show that atheism is accurate and correct matt dillahunty is terrified to answer my question what proof and evidence do you have that would finally at last prove that atheism is accurate and correct, they won't answer it. They're terrified of it. What we want is substantive proof and evidence that would show that. Not 
I lack a belief because you're wrong in your lack of belief. All right. You ever hear this? They'll say atheism is the default position. Why? Why would atheism be the default position? It's not the default position in science. Can you imagine if science said, we're not going to test anything, we're not going to look at the evidence, but here's the speed of light. That's the default position until proven otherwise. Have atheists disproven the existence of God? No. So why would the default position be atheism? And, you know, the whole world disagrees with that type of thinking. The majority of the world are theist. So how could it be the default position? Even if you, in other words, even if you say, okay, atheism is a default position and everyone's an atheist until which time they're convinced that God exists and they become a theist, well, why is everyone leaving atheism then? They're convinced that God exists and all these people left the default position of atheism, including me, by the way. I was an atheist, but I was a little kid. Most atheists are kids. Did you know that? Most atheists on YouTube are kids. And that's fine. But when you grow up and you get out of the tough skin jeans and you put on some good old American Levi's, you'll realize that it's madness to say that atheism is the default position. Who or what establishes that? No, let me tell you how to approach it. That's called presuppositionalism. Where you approach something that it's a fact, even though you haven't proven it. No, no, you have to prove that atheism is accurate and correct. You can't just take it by default and say it's the default position. Who says that? Where is it written? No, the way you do it is you say, let me look at all the evidence against God's existence, and let me look at all the evidence for God's existence, and let the chips fall where they may. Atheists, I have a question for you. Where's your evidence? Where's your arguments that would show that God doesn't exist, that atheism would be accurate and correct? This is beautiful, by the way. Glad I gassed up. This is taking us out into the... Uh, beautiful wide open areas isn't it amazing that there was a massive explosion and no design nothing all this just shot out of it and i'm able to ride on this motorcycle that just popped into existence so atheism is not the default position that's you're being a presuppositional atheist and that is the wrong way to do it. For example, you see this guy in front of me, way up there, let's catch up in the car. If I said the default position, because I don't have any evidence, woohoo, this is really fun. It's like a roller coaster up and down here. I don't have any evidence that the dude has a cell phone in his car. Therefore, the default position is he doesn't have a cell phone. Well, what if he has one? I would be wrong saying that the, the default position is he doesn't have a cell phone. You can't approach it that way. You need to look at all the evidence and then go where the chips may lie, where they fall. Do you know, this is very important, when I'm in a debate with atheists, they never give arguments against the existence of God. I mean, they bring these things up, but these aren't arguments against the existence of God. Okay, hold on. we got to adjust the uh, thing here. So they'll say that because they have no evidence, therefore God doesn't exist. But lack of evidence is still not an argument against God. Just like the cell phone analogy I was just using. Hey, we're in the wine country. I was just using the cell phone analogy. It would be foolish for me to say that car in front of me, how you doing brother, doesn't have a cell phone because I have no evidence of it. Lack of evidence 
is not evidence that the thing doesn't exist. The guy here could actually have a cell phone. Now, another thing too, the atheists have only seen less than 99% of everything in the universe. I haven't even seen anything in that guy's vehicle in front. So I cannot say that there is no cell phone. I would have to scour his entire vehicle to say there's no cell phone. The atheist would have to scour the entire universe and also, by the way, the spiritual realm. And then they would find that, that hey, you know what? I looked everywhere, I looked in heaven, I looked here, I looked there, and then if God wasn't there, they'd be able to say it. But they, they haven't looked everywhere, just like I haven't looked inside that guy's vehicle. Now, of course, we have evidences for God's existence on top of that. So if we have evidences and arguments for God's existence, and we have no arguments against God's existence, the evidence is all going towards that God exist. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Because I don't know if this guy has a cell phone in his vehicle, I should not say he doesn't have a cell phone in his vehicle. That's irrational. Alright, so absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. You must say, well, look, I looked through the guy's whole vehicle and I saw that there was no cell phone. Well, atheists, have you seen the other 99% of the universe? And have you seen the spiritual realm? No. So you can't, no atheist can say with arrogance that God does not exist. You can say God does exist because of the evidences and the arguments that do exist. Look right below this video, 20 arguments for the existence of God. You'll see it right below there. So if I'm in a debate and I have all these arguments for the existence of God and the atheist has no arguments against the existence of God, calling Jesus a zombie is really not an argument against the existence of God, then all the weight of the evidence and the arguments falls on the side of God existing. You would have to admit that. Um, okay, so <laughs> this one... They say, well, the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. So what? I got no problem with it. What are witches bringing to our society? The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. So what? You know what this is? The world's smallest violin. I don't care one hoot or holler about the witches. the good old days of suffer not a witch to live. I'm going to love when uh, Jesus returns the millennium era, the millennium kingdom of Christ, and we have a theocracy. I bet he brings back suffer not a witch to live. Ah, oh, the good old days. Looking so forward to it. Uh, let me do this here. <laughs> What's next? Well, they say they can't see God. We're not going to beat a dead horse. We already talked about that. Y y you haven't even seen the other 99% of the universe. And just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm going to give you an example. There are more things that you and I haven't seen that exist. Stars, other people that we've never seen that exist, other countries that we've never been to, that we've never seen uh, that exist, other foods that we've never even seen or heard of that exist. There's more things that we haven't seen that exist than things that we've seen that exist. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, atheist. Alright, so let's go back here. See what else. They'll say morals are subjective, really? Morals are subjective? Um, I will ask them, if you were, uh, let's say, you're a female atheist, which is very rare, if you're a female atheist. But if you're a female atheist, and um, you have a boyfriend, 
and he promises you he's going to be loyal and faithful and then he cheats on you do I really believe you're going to say oh well there's no problem with that everything is subjective if you are a male atheist and you own a, a business let's say you own a vitamin shop selling vitamins and your employee who's an atheist he steals money from you out of the cash register and you're like hey you're six hundred dollars short i'm doing the accounting and he says well remember you said everything is subjective and to me your atheist employee says it's not wrong for me to go ahead and take your money. That's what he says. Well, what would you do? Are you telling me, atheist, that you would say, oh yeah, that's right, well, just steal as much as you want. You see, you can't live your life that way. I was in a debate, I'm gonna put the video below here, and the atheist, I challenged him, I said, is rape objectively wrong? In other words, it's wrong all the time. Even if you're the pervert rapist, it's always wrong. And he said, well, no, it's subjective. Because that's how atheists talk with their limp little wrist. You know, it, it, it's subjective. Well, when an atheist says that it's subjective, he must give me an example in debate of when rape is okay. So I said, okay, if rape is subjective, Give me an example when rape is good and just wonderful. And he stuttered and stammered like Matt Dillahunty did. Matt Dillahunty stutters and stammers when you ask him, what proof and evidence can you provide that would finally at last prove that atheism is accurate and correct? So he stuttered and he stammered and he said, well, you sound like Porky Pig. And he said, rape is never okay. And I said, well, let's put objective morality on my side. See, the atheist misunderstands, you know, this um, epistemology with ontology. So, you know how Christians kept saying slavery is wrong, you know, slavery in the West. You know, slavery is wrong, slavery is wrong, and it was the Christians that helped abolish slavery. Well, that's called epistemology, how we come to know and learn that something's wrong. Ontology is the existence of it. So, for example, rape is wrong. And I do believe that society can come to learn the objective moral truth that rape is wrong. It doesn't mean that the objective moral truth is changing. The society is just moving towards the objective truth. So when atheists say um, morals are subjective, say put your uh, wallet, or if it's a female, put your uh, purse on the table and go through there and say, I'm gonna take all this money and I don't want you to say a peep. I'm gonna go give all the money you have and I'm gonna give it to the church, a good Christian church. You know how the Bible says he will use evil for good. Can I have a witness? And you just take that money from the atheist right in front of them and say, so what do you got to say about that, Mr. or Mrs. Atheist? And and you need to say when they start opening their mouth, go, ah, ah, ah. I don't wanna hear a peep out of you. Remember, morals are subjective, but if I'm a Christian and the atheist tries to do that to me and tries to steal from me, I can go, ah, 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 thou shalt not steal. So in Christianity, you can ground objective moral values. You can't ground it in atheism. Atheists have a moral problem because it's like whatever anyone wants to do, there is no morality in atheism. They always try to borrow, or should I say steal, from our Christian worldview. All right, so Matt Dillahunty has said this, Richard Dawkins has said it, Godless Engineer said it. They all say, well, you're just a Christian because you were born in America. If you were born somewhere else, you'd be something else. Well, Dinesh D'Souza is a Christian. You know, he was born in India. 
and so you can't really use that and then also that's called the genetic fallacy how you doing brother you can't say something is true or false just based on the origin of it if an atheist says it is a fact that Jesus died and rose from the dead that's true but the origin is coming from an atheist it doesn't change the fact that Jesus did die and rise from the dead Christianity is true whether you're born in Germany Switzerland the UK or whatever the atheists always commit this genetic fallacy saying because you're in America that's why you're a Christian atheist you got to quit doing that I mean I'm doing this to help you atheists because when you do leave atheism with which will happen when you grow up and if you're still an atheist and you're over 18 isn't it time that you grew up aren't you embarrassed <laughs> aren't you embarrassed to be an atheist <laughs> so that's the genetic fallacy okay number 10 atheism is good they'll say no it's not the atheists have murdered and killed and raped more people than all religions combined the atheist regimes of Stalin Pol Pot the Kim uh, Kim Jong-il, the Kim Rouge, and more. Not to mention right now, the atheists in China that have caused the pandemic. That's right, the atheists lied, so people died. Do you know someone that has died of the coronavirus? You can blame it on atheist China. They themselves lied about the uh, coronavirus. If they wouldn't have lied, there'd be less people dying. Atheists lied, people died. So atheism is not good, it is evil in its purest form. I'm going to put a link below here, atheism and rape. And atheists even joke about rape, they promote rape. That's right, atheists promoting rape. Do you know Sink Uger from uh, the Young Turks? They should call it the Fat Turks, if you've seen Sink Uger. But Sink Uger said that people should have the right to have sex with animals. If there's any sheep out here, I would ask them, what do you think about that? And I bet they would say, no, that's bad, bad, very bad. But I'm not kidding you. Look up Sink, C-Y-E-N-K, animal sex. And he believes that atheists should have the right to have sex with other animals. Now, he's being consistent because, after all, if atheists are just animals... What difference does it make if the amazing atheist, Matt Dillahunty, godless engineer, what difference does it make if they put on some Barry White? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We really got it going, don't we, baby? Dun, dun, dun. And they have some wine there, and there's a sheep sitting in the dining room chair across from them. And then that, it starts saying, my first, my last, my everything. You're the answer to all my dreams. And Matt Dillahunty is looking into the sheep's eyes. On atheism, there's nothing wrong with it. You atheists are some sick bastards. <laughs> you atheists are just sick. Anyways, look at the link below here for proof and evidence that atheism is not accurate or correct <laughs> all right look at trump 2020 Woo that's right folks trump 2020 i'm going to go out on a limb and say trump is going to win uh, let's see what else we have here yeah, so can you imagine Richard Dawkins, Godless Engineer, Matt Dillahunty with the Barry White album on, pouring some wine, romancing a sheep? On atheism, those sick bastards. <laughs> on atheism, there's nothing wrong with being a sick bastard. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Aren't you ashamed, atheist? atheism is madness oh my gosh we gotta hurry so uh i'm only on number 10 
atheism is good. We showed you that atheism is not good. All right, ready for this? Got to take this out here, flip it over. God doesn't like homosexuals, they'll say. Oh, come on. All joking aside, because I know this is a sensitive issue. God loves the homosexuals. He wants them saved. He doesn't want them to get AIDS. You know, they were saying that gay stands for got AIDS yet? Question mark. It's, there's nothing gay about being homosexual. God doesn't want you to get age, AIDS. You put a, a bird in the cage to protect its life from the cats. God doesn't want them to get AIDS. I'm going to prove to you right now that God is saying homosexuality is sin because he loves people, doesn't want them to get AIDS, and it leads to death. I'm going to prove to you that homose homosexuality and homosex leads to death, okay? I'll prove it to you. Okay, so this is the part on homosexuality where I'll show you that God loves the homosexuals. He is trying to protect... Oh boy, speed bump. Why would they put a speed bump right there? <laughs> I was looking at the phone and I saw the speed bump and I had to stand up in the pegs here. So, he was trying to protect his creation from not offing itself, you know, killing itself. So, here's the riddle. Riddle me this. What are the woman's breast for? Hmm? You know, I was watching a debate with Dinesh D'Souza when he defeated Matt Dillahunty. I'll put that debate below here. And Dinesh D'Souza said, why is it when it comes to homosexuality, you throw science out the door? Scientifically, biologically, the woman's breasts are to feed babies. What are the ovaries for of the woman? Hmm. The woman's body was designed to mate with a man in a man. Not someone with a mullet that looks like a man. A real man. And create a baby. You Two women, look, two sword fights can't do it. You, you, look, it doesn't work. It just, it doesn't work. Okay? This is like people behind me like what the hell is he doing <laughs> this is common sense are you atheists insane so anyways come with me folks as we take a hundred women and we put them on a deserted island we give them enough food for 300 years we go back in 300 years and everyone's dead why because they can't produce life you need a man and a woman well, let's try it with men. You put a hundred men on an island. You go back in 300 years, they're all dead. No one's alive. They couldn't have, they can't create life. Why? Because it's unnatural. But ladies and gentlemen, we put 50 women and 50 men on the island. And you go back and you have life and life abundantly. Isn't it great the way God's way works? You know, it's been said that lesbians are going to go to hell lickety-split. Because in Scripture, it talks about that. Do you know in Scripture it talks about lesbians going to hell lickety-split? I'm not making this up. Go Now, it doesn't use that exact phrase. But go to Romans and read the first two pages. And it talks about the woman use, leaving the natural use of the man and becoming a lesbo. Lickety split. You, you don't want to go to hell lickety split. Now, if, if someone's a guy and they want to have sex with the man, well, I got bad news for you too. You're going to get it. Those homosexual guys are going to get it in the end. They're going to get it. You know, scripture talks about men with men doing what is unseemly and it even has a hint that 
they get diseases from it it says and receiving the penalty there's a penalty if you do it that way folks do you know that atheism leads to homosexuality if you're in atheism too long I got to get around here I'm gonna take you downtown if you're in atheism too long you may be putting on the Barry White album do 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 we really got to go with it. My first, my last, my everything. You atheist. <laughs> it's just bad. Um, you know, it's interesting. We joke around about that, the atheist and their animal love. But, you know, it says it right there in Scripture that they'll even, atheism, it'll say, leads to this animal love. It's sick. Atheism, listen, it is a disease of the mind. But I have the vaccination for you. I know a man, if you're in the homosexual lifestyle, that can set you straight. King of kings, lord of lords. All right, so <laughs> it's unnatural. It leads to death. This is lane splitting. It is legal in California, albeit not for the faint of heart. Not too bad at these slow speeds. Let's see what else, because we got to wrap this up. Oh, the atheist will say God doesn't exist because they're telling God to kill them, and God's not killing them. That's so lame. If, um, if I love someone and I want to get them off drugs and they're like, no, just kill me. Don't help me anymore. Just kill me. I don't want to kill them. I love them. We love the atheists. You don't want to be like Christopher Hitchens in hell. So thank God that God is patient and he doesn't kill me. You know, I was an atheist when I was a kid and thank God God that he is patient and he didn't kill me and he allowed me time to gain wisdom spiritual wisdom and he allowed me time to see that atheism is full of crap I'm just trying to help the atheist I, I really am they're going to leave anyways they're going to leave atheism anyways and I'm telling you that when they leave they're going to be embarrassed. I was embarrassed to be an atheist. But I figure I can go ahead and uh, change some hearts and minds by showing people how full of crap atheism is. So the atheist will say the universe looks exactly the way it would look if there were no God. No, it looks exactly the way it would look if there is a God. I'll give you an example. I want you to imagine that the universe was the product of an accident. Just an accident. An explosion. Let alone the problem that nothing can't create everything. So you have to have a first cause. And if all matter, space, time, energy had to be created, which scientists shows that the universe did have a beginning, which means all matter, space, time, energy had to be created. So you had to have a cause outside of the universe. See that GMC truck? Something outside of it created it. It can't create itself. You see what I'm saying? So imagine that the explosion occurs and we have another great road coming up. The explosion occurs and the universe is created. I'm going to tell you how that universe would look. You would have life, all types of people like us on one planet and then on another planet you'd have some other life and then on another planet you'd have some other life And then on another planet, you'd have some life, and you would see it 
kind of scattered random like that. Like this, if I went to the kitchen and I threw a bunch of quarters on the floor, like let's say, you know, 20 bucks worth of quarters, I just threw them on the floor, they'd be scattered all over randomly. But what if I went to the kitchen and I stacked up the quarters, one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other, where it was fine-tuned and focused in one place. That is design. You could tell that someone did that. Well, what type of universe do we have? We have one like the second example I gave. We don't have life all over the place. You know what? I gotta go over here. It was this corner. We don't have life all over the place. We have life focused and fine-tuned here and only here. I would expect, if it was the product of randomness and luck, that we would have life on this planet, a bunch of people walking around, life on another planet, a bunch of people walking around. We only have it right here. That shows me that it's focused and fine-tuned. Also, the fact that we have order in the universe. There would be no science if there wasn't the order. Look up the teleological argument where, here's a good analogy of this argument. Imagine there's all these constants that have to be just right for us to have life here. In other words, the weak nuclear force, um, the distance to the sun, the gravity, the gravity that we have. Uh, there's, imagine there's all these constants, 50, 60, 70 of these things that have to be just right. And if you were to adjust one of those things just a hair's breadth, life here on Earth would be destroyed, kaput. Well, that's the reality of it. The reality is, is that we have life here on this planet. NRA, all right, brother. NRA hat getting into a cobra. That guy's just epic. Freedom. So the universe looks exactly the way it would look if we had an intelligent God that created it and sustained for life. Um, all right, so they'll say, you know, Christopher Hitchens is in hell right now. We're not happy about that. You know who else most likely is in hell? There was a guy on YouTube, DPR Jones. And I would always challenge him to provide proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. And he gets so angry at me. He gets so mad. He was an attorney uh, for a little while, but he would get so angry. And um, he made a video, it's still out there, Shock of God is an atheist. How you doing, brother? And I had to correct him on it, and I said, Look, I'm not an atheist. An atheist denies any God exists. You can't call an athe uh, a Christian an atheist because they're not Muslim. They're still Christian. Oh, let's go in here. I got to see that. I'm kind of prone to liking the motorcycles better. So I said, I tried to get through to him. You know what's really sad? Just that I know of, there's been two atheists that I've personally talked to that I've tried to get through to. One of them I did get through to, but one I didn't. DPR Jones most likely is in hell right now. I'm not happy about it. I really, truly love the guy, wish he would have repented, but he passed away. He died. And then there's another one, Spin Galley. He was a motorcycle vlogger. I even had him on Shock Radio. We had our radio show. And 
Um, I'm always going to be honest and tell you the truth. I am not going to say that he became a Christian because I really don't know, but I will tell you this, and this is the truth, and I'll say it now since he's passed on and it's important. He became very um, tolerant of the gospel and he would even start asking me questions. Well, what about this and what about that? Uh, we talked on the, uh, you know, Skype because like he was in the UK and stuff. And he actually became very nice and, I, and what had happened, I'm not going to get into some other things. He had some other personal things uh, that he was going through in life. Like we all have our issues, you know, struggles. And, um, but Sven Galli is a motorcycle rider. Um, he, I think, could have become a Christian. But what happened with him is he was found burnt in a fire. I don't know if he smoked. Look at that little dog, not to be insensitive to, Svengali. Svengali, I really love that guy. Like, as, as a brother, you know, he was coming around to reason. And um, we had him on our creation evolution shows and stuff. And but it's sad. You got DPR Jones that just died. And for what? What difference did he make in the world? Seriously, he could have done so much. But we're going to go over here because sometimes there is these um, motorcycles over here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they're here. We're going to go around the block and we'll check them out. Dang it, no sport bikes. So anyways, um, what were we on here? Let's finish up. I get all sad when I start thinking about Svengali. I wish I had lived over where he lived. You know, we could have went out and, you know, went to get food to eat. And plus, he, he was a motorcycle rider. So I hope everything worked out with both of them. But I don't have much hope for DPR Joan. So, oh yeah, so Christopher Hitchens, tell me one thing that I can't do as a Christian, uh, as an atheist, that I should say that you can't do as a Christian, that you do as a Christian. He would say, tell me one thing that I can't do as an atheist that you can do as a Christian. Well, um, Dr. William Lane Craig was in debate and he said, well, that's easy. Worship God, you know, s sing worship songs to God, tithing. And then I would add, go to heaven, spend eternity with God, see your family members again in heaven, you know, all types of things. Um, the last thing, they'll say creationists are dumb. They'll actually post this on my YouTube channel. They'll spell dumb D-U-M, so I know it's like a kid. <laughs> so the creationists are dumb thing, let me tell you about that. Everyone is a creationist. I started the video off with, uh, let's make sure we're still recording, great. I started the video off joking around about how the motorcycle just came into existence, but everyone believes that the earth was created. Everyone believes that something created us. Now, the atheists believe that out of the dirt, and water we were all created with your tongue your tongue that just coincidentally was designed so you can enjoy flavors your ears so you can hear your eyes so you can see your respiratory system atheists come on you guys are so full of crap that you would say that all this popped in <laughs> you know into existence by luck and chance well, it happened over millions of years. That doesn't make it any better. That You're talking about something that's a miracle. And if it was a miracle, then that's more existence for God. Uh, and thus, not a good argument for atheism. But anyways, the atheists believe that out of the dirt and water, this is what they'll tell you, because they can't say God was involved. Out of the dirt and water you evolved and it created you the dirt 
and the water on their own, there was no design, they'll say, created you. That's what they'll say. You've got to be a fool to believe that. You know what scripture says? The scripture says out of the earth, and it talks about God creating out of the earth and out of the water. It's not like how atheists say that God just goes poof and there's like a person. Remember how Eve was created from part of man's body? Folks, I have been challenging atheists for over 10 years to answer the shock of God challenge and they haven't been able to do so. In fact, the last one we just read, the atheists believe, I guess, the dirt was magic dirt. The atheists believe in magic. That magically the universe created itself. Out of magic and luck, magically your dog was created. Magically you were created out of the earth. The earth did it. Doesn't it make more sense that someone guided it? Doesn't it make more sense that your eye was created? Doesn't it make more sense that your tongue was put there to taste all these wonderful flavors that God created so you could enjoy your life? Doesn't it make more sense to think that? I have come to the conclusion that most atheists really don't believe the crap that they're saying. I've talked to some of them and they're pretty smart even though like a lot of them are kids. And I'm thinking they really don't believe what they're saying. There's no way they can be so stupid as to believe that. Now folks, out of all the things I just went through, have you heard even one thing? One! That was a good argument against God's existence. Of course not. But ladies and gentlemen, look below this video and you will see at least 20 arguments for the existence of God. So I ask you, if there's 20 really good arguments and evidences, and there's more than that, but I'm going to put my video where I cover 20, for God's existence, and there's zero arguments against the existence of God, go where the evidence is. I think it's quite obvious where the evidence is. Scripture says a fool says within his heart, there is no God. Do what I did. Leave the foolishness of atheism.